Level 1 isn't actually as safe as it seems, and it's because of what's lurking beneath it in its sub-levels. Hey everyone, I'm Brugly, and today I'm going to be talking about Backrooms Level 1's hidden areas and sub-levels that you definitely did not know existed, but they've been under your feet this whole time. Let's get into it, shall we? Also, if you want to see a more personal side of me, go check out my vlog channel. It'll be the top link in the description below. Thank you. So first up for the video is level 1.1, or as it's nicknamed, Lurking Danger. That's always fun. The area is classified as a class variable difficulty, and is for a good reason. The level itself looks sort of like its parent level, the main level 1, but the biggest difference is found in the infinite portions of the sublevel. Parts of this zone look like an empty, unfinished office space with carpeted floors that haven't fully been completed yet, which kind of gives it this industrial appearance, almost like a mix of level 1 and 2. But the actual sizes of the office halls and rooms is where it gets pretty strange, because they can range in size from being big and behemoth-sized to being very cramped and claustrophobic. The floors in some of the parts of this sublevel actually aren't even carpet anymore, and instead they're just natural things like grass and sand, or even asphalt in some parts, which is obviously weird because there's no sun here, so how does grass grow? Now, just like the main part of level one, there are actually resources here too, but the ones here are far more dangerous. For example, it's been found some of these resources have been laced with liquid paint. Wow, that's, that's scary, actually. So going past these office hallways and rooms, there's also another section of the sublevel that looks like self-storage units. These units actually have supplies in them, you just gotta break in and see, you might find something useful. But they look pretty creepy, and also we don't know why they're here. On top of this, there's a small chance that entities might spawn in the darker areas of the sublevel, and they can be any of the main entities, like Smilers and Wretches and, and that kind of thing. You also might stumble into a giant Anethica, which are these huge black void-like entities that can mess with your mind, and they're just scary. So my tip to avoid them is to stay in the areas with light. Don't go into the dark. To enter this sublevel, you have to take a series of sharp turns in level 1's hallways to be sent here, and to exit, you can find a fire escape that leads down to stairs, go down them, and you'll be sent to the next level, level 2. But next up for this video is level 1.42, or a view of the cosmos. This sublevel is very different from the parent level and the other sublevels I'm going over, and you might actually like to stay here. It's classified as a class zero, and is safe with no angry creatures that want to eat your face off, which is always fun. And the level itself looks like a neighborhood in the middle of the night, with fields and meadows mixed throughout, all surrounding this road. And all of that is surrounding this one road that cuts through it all. Now even though the level seems to take place at midnight, the sky isn't actually completely dark, because the stars and the galaxies and the cosmos above illuminate everything, and it's just this beautiful purple hue of light. The houses here in this neighborhood look like regular ones that you'd expect to see from real life, but it all just feels empty and alone, but calming at the same time. The level is also most likely infinite, which just makes it more relaxing to me at least, because no one's found a border, but that's not for sure. Calm rain showers are also a pretty common thing on this level, and it seems that the rain is actually purple in color, just like most other things here are also purple. Off in the distance of the road, you can just faintly see a mountain, and if you follow towards that mountain, it's likely that you'll be taken to a telescope. And if you find this telescope, you can use it to get a better view of the sky, or a view off of the distance, or that kind of thing. Underneath this beautiful purple paradise, there's a system of tunnels that have been nicknamed the Galaxy Cave System. And they just look like a bunch of interconnected tunnels with huge pink and purple crystals sticking out of the walls. There's also a weird pink lake thing that's been found that's deep into the caves, which is cool as well. But, back up to the surface of the level, some of the houses have been found to have almond water in them, which is cool, and and others have beds and sheets that you can sleep in. And overall, this is probably one of the safest sublevels of all time, and you might just want to stay here forever. I mean, I might. To 
to enter it, you have to find an exit door in the parking garage of level 1 and go through it. And to exit this sublevel, you can find the moon in the sky with a telescope and then stare at it for a long period of time and you'll be sent to level 24, which is a huge jump because if you want to skip levels 2 through 23, come to this sublevel and you can. I think that would actually be a pretty good method to help speedrun the backrooms. Let me know what you think below. The last sublevel for the video isn't so safe, sadly, but it's sublevel 1.5 or decidophobia or decidophobia, which is pretty much the phobia of making decisions. It's classified as a class variable and it gets more dangerous the longer and the further that you're here. So that's no fun. But the level looks like a series of winding corridors and staircases that connect. The entire level is made out of cement, which is just plain and not broken really, it's just ugly looking concrete, and any attempt to break the concrete has failed. There are thought to be around 10 floors and corridors to this sublevel, and when you get here, you'll be on the top one. The goal is to work your way down the different staircases to get to the bottom for the exit, but that's going to be pretty hard to do, considering if you go down one staircase, it might lead to like 10 other options, and you could pick the wrong one, so you better be careful. And behind some of the doors on this level are just other staircases, so it can get really confusing if you don't know where you're going but there is a pretty decent map of the level on the article which is in the description below go check it out if you want to see that just know that most of the staircases are terrifying to go down to entities can also spawn here shocker in the darker spots and they hide around in these staircase corners and below just out of the light reach and they normally use surprise attack methods to attack their prey which is you in this case you're the prey but my tip for surviving this is to just use a flashlight to try to shine down every dark corridor you go down so you don't get taken by surprise but to be honest we have no idea what all is lurking in the corridors so good luck trying to escape the maze of stairs Thank you all for watching the video, that is it, and I appreciate you so much for watching to the end. I haven't done a comment thing in a while, but I want to keep you all on your toes, and I will heart every one of the comments that I see. Thank you so much for interacting with the content and watching. I love and appreciate all of you, and uh, you know, I hope you're having a great day. I really do, and hope you're having a great year so far. This year's going to be crazy for the Brugley channel. I'm excited. I want to hit a million subscribers by the end of the year, so if you want to help me with that, I would really appreciate it by you know telling your friends, family, aunt, uncle, dog, cat, fish about me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for everything, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.